Oh, hello, hey guys. So my name is Habib, and uh, there's a bit of a problem. You see, I've made this cool, a sort of cool effect, but nobody, none of my friends, want to listen to how I made it. And they say they're not interested. Or they say it's just going to be rubbish. But I don't think so. But since you are here, so I'm going to think I'm going to share this effect with you. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to make a staggered anim.js What's that sound? A staggered anim.js text effect using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Oh, that sound again. So anyways, you see that I've already set up my HTML. Now, you see, HTML it has the link to the JavaScript and CSS, like any HTML document should have. Oh yeah, I also created a folder called Kazam with these three files in it. But a thing, very important, this div, this div is where all the magic happens. But actually the JavaScript is where all the magic happens, but nobody cares. So what's up with this suspicious div? Well, this div, it contains the data text. Hello world. ID of div. This data text is very, very, very important. I cannot stress its importance. You might be wondering, but happy, but what's so important about this rear data text thing? It just looks like any other thing. Well, I'll explain to you later. We don't have re really have time now. So let's jump straight into the JavaScript of this. So I'll create a variable called D, which is going to be document or get element by ID a uh, Dave. So we're going to basically just get this div. And now what I need to do is I'll loop over all of these letters in the data text and put them in the div. But you might be wondering, this is just unnecessary. We could simply just write hello world and get on with our lives. But the thing is, if we just write hello world like that, everything, all the text seeds are going to be rendered as a single element, which is not good. Which, since we want to in the, in, uh, we want to edit all of the text individually, and if all of the text are, is rendered as a single element, we can't do that. So you could probably use some calculus, some very complicated HTML, CSS, JavaScript tricks that's very obscure and nobody knows, but that is just totally unnecessary. So what we can do is that we can split up the text into individual elements and then we can edit them individually to make a cool effect. So what's up? So I can make a for loop. With i equals zero, i is less than d dot data set. Oh no, d dot data set dot text dot length. What is this foreign thing? This is what we call data sets. Data sets that can be used to store information, just like variables. So this data text equals hello world. It is good. This is going to get this data text. So this is data text. This data is just there to define the data set, and this this thing after the dash is the name of the data set. So this since this the name of this data set is text, I'm going to write dot data set dot text. So if I name the dot data set dot y, then if I name this data y, since the name of the data set is y, I will use the dot data set dot y dot length instead. Uh, remove no so we have this and now what I'm going to do is that I'll create this new thing a new variable called h1 which is documents dot create element uh, h1 this ie what it's going to do is that it will loop it will loop over all of the text in this data set and then each time it's looped over a text a letter in the data set it will
Uh, so apart from that mishap. Uh, so anyways, so I'll get this H1. Document dot create element H1. So it means for each letter in this te in this data text, for each letter in it, you create a H1 element. What I'm going to do is that I will set the H1's text content, i.e. the text inside of it, to d.dataset.s slice no 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 not dot slice i comma i plus one very curious ah this is dot text very curious about what this does well i'm not explain to you what it does but just know that this data set dot slice so actually i was lying i will explain to you what it does so let's say i use this data set data set dot text dot slice I don't know let's say zero comma two so that means it is going to check index zero of this text since strings this text is basically just an array with a bunch of characters in it so it will check for index zero of this array which is h and then after that it's going to check for index two of this array which is this first l over here and then you end up with the result of h e l so if i use the, the dot data sets dot slice i don't know 0 comma 4 no comma 5 first it will start at index 0 and then it will check index 5 which is 0 1 2 3 4 5 which is this hello so we end up with a result of hello and then we can use the slice function anywhere we want. So what you need to know is that what this does, it basically just sets this thing's text to the individual letters of this data text. So then we need to use this D dot, no, it's a pen child, I think, H1. We've got results. Hello world. But it's not cool enough. Just look at it. It looks so ugly. So what I'm going to do is that I will make everything in line. You know. Is uh. Just see it for yourself. You see. Now everything is on the same page. But there's a problem. It's a space. It does not register the spaces. You see, this data text or text or slice, it just skipped over the spaces. We need a way to include the spaces. Since apparently spaces can't be considered as a character, how disrespectful. What I can do is I can use this replace function. So the replace function takes in two parameters. One, one. So if I write E, S, what it's going to do is that it will it will check it will check this data text and wherever it finds letter e it will replace it with s so we end up with h s l l o world but what if we add another e ah not there here what if we add another e what happened well the e stays the same imposter well, what happened? The there's this replace function. It only checks for the first text. It only checks if the f the first e. So if there are two e's, it's only going to replace the first e and nothing else. How lazy! A way to remedy this is by using the replace all function, which will replace anywhere where there's e with s. So how can this help us? Well this we can use this white space and then dot what this means is that it will replace anywhere where there's a white space the this with a dot so let's try it i write hello world s now you see that what 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 happened oh i forgot to save it uh, you see that anywhere where there's a white space it's replaced with a dot let me create two white spaces and see if anything happens. 
two white spaces two dots but we don't want this we want the white spaces to show all we want is for the white spaces to show well there could be some way there are, is a way to do this but i'm a lazy person and lazy person to find weird lazy ways of solving things so i simply just searched up simply just search up white space character scroll down until you find this name cheap website or you could just type in the link of the website and then copy any space if you want for, so for me i'll copy this three per em space and then you can paste it right here now but now if we just use a normal white space it's not going to register as a character but but if we use this it what what the, the space the, the space is there or how did this happen well it's because this white space is not a character is not registered as a character in normal white space but if we copy the white space from somewhere like here it is going to register it as a character like a b c or d it's going to register it as a character even though it doesn't register this as a character so that is why you see this transparent box here so we've got all this what about the cool effect the cool kablam effect the cool kablam effect so um for the club kablam effect go to anim.js andres.com yes uh, Hey, what happened to the website? Did this hang? Oh, uh, apparently I'm blind. Didn't. Now, AnimeJS v4 is coming soon. But for now, I'm going to use v version 3.2.2. Now, for anybody watching this video from the future, AnimeJS v4 is going to be a bit different than AnimeJS version 3.2.2. Now, obviously, that's probably a massive understatement. It's going to be very different. But, yeah. Whoa. So I can download the zip fold zip file and extract it. Of course I've already done that. 3D objects. Aha, uh -huh, AnimeJS master. So go to the AnimeJS master, then go to lib, copy the anim.min.js and go to document and how am I going to meant to find this oh how am I meant to find my uh folder out of all of these folders? I mean, I just can't know. I just can't believe how I'm going to find it. So now that we have our anim.min.js here, script source equals anim.min.js slash script, and now it's time for the actual cool effect. Now this anim, I can use this target hashtag Dave H1. But it's going to get the this h1 that we created inside of the dave and i can set its scale i can use this keyframes property and then uh, i will set the loop to true which means the animation will loop and no 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 set the easing to easing out sign because uh, I really like that easing for some reason. It's just so smooth and silky. So, for the first keyframe of the animation, I will set its scale to, to 0 0.9. Then, for the second frame of the animation, I will set its scale to 1.5. No, 1.2. It is a bit too big. 0.7. And then for the last frame of the animation, uh, for the next frame of the animation, I'll set the scale to 0.8. And for the last frame of the animation, I'll just set the scale back to 1 again. It's going to keep from the animation. We want this to be staggered. All of them are playing at once, which is kind of boring. So I can set the delay to anim.stagger. 100 change each of the their animations will be staggered individually and we get this kind of cool effect 
Now there is a way to do this in JavaScript, but last time I tried, I ended up just getting something. Yeah. So since I'm lazy, I just decided to use AnimeJS for this. But it, it's still cool nonetheless. Now, for this animation, I'll set its delay to anim.stagger10100. I want there to be a kind of anticipation before the animation begins. You know, you say scales 0.7, it will stay like that for some time, and then BAM! Springs up in, in all its glory. So, the first step I can take is increasing the duration of this to, I know, to, I don't know, 5000 or something, and increasing the delay. And boom. But I want the uh, yes, there's anticipation and think the duration is too long. Yes, there's anticipation, but I want the and it to be more extreme. So 1.4 would be a good choice to make it more extreme. And whoa, very classy. Uh, so. You might be wondering, yeah, we've got the animation, but this looks very ugly. This part, I'm going to style it with CSS. I want to center the deep, but since I'm, well, lazy, I'll just set the display to greet. And then I'll place items on the center. You only center it horizontally, so, so I need to set its height to 100 as the H, which is the entirety, which is the entire browser height. But the only problem with this is text is very small, so I really need to increase the size of the text. I can do it here in this thing. H1 dot font size. Uh, font size is equal to D dot D. No, it doesn't want to do it. It's one dot style dot font size. Ugh, font size is equal to, um, let's say, 25 rem. Bam. Hello, world in all its glory. Now, let me go to the page inspect, even though there are no errors. Good body. Div. Div. What? What? What is this? What is this? What is this orange thing? Well, it's margin. You see, by default, text. If you have a text, by default, the text are going to have margin. But I don't want the text to have margin. I want the text to have no margin. So that is why when you have two texts. There is always some space between the text because by default the text they have margin, but I don't want the text to have margin, so I can I can set the h1 dot style dot margin to zero pixels. Now did that actually do anything? Well, let's see. Oh yeah, it's Control F N. Oh, this is, no no, no elements. Yes, yes, and you see that the tags they don't have any more margin anymore. Cool. So next we need to make the background pop. So how to make the background pop? As the body to background size. Background size. And pixels as background gradient. Ah, there's no need for all of this. So I think I'm going to set the background to linear gradient. Red, comma, blue. Yes. 
Very ugly indeed. So ugly. Most ugliest thing I've ever seen. I think using a radar way that would be better, but it's still very ugly. Well, I think I'm going to write circle. Red comma blue. The circle property is going to turn it into a circle. But these colors, they look bad. So I'm going to go to color pick Google Color Picker and pick out some nice colors because well uh no. I will choose this color. I will save and now this background is this nice red color. And then for this for the center of the circle I'll choose this nice light red color. And then I can set this to 50%. 50%. I can set it now. When I set the percentage to the, the same value, what this does is that it turns this, it makes this gradient to be solid, which I definitely want. Now I can cho choose another color. Uh. 80%. Okay, uh, let me reduce it to 20%. 60%. Yikes, maybe. Yikes. Hello, world. Next, we really need to make this text to pop. This text is, is, doesn't really stand out out of the hordes of other things there are. So maybe I could just switch up these things a little. Doesn't look good. So, what the final thing I'm going to do is I need to spice up this text. So, how to spice it up? I can go to Google Fonts. Google Fonts, not Google Fonts. Squished together again. Maybe Roboto will be a good font. And yeah, and then yeah. I think Railway will be a better font. Railway is basically my favorite font. One of my favorite fonts. So, my many other favorites. I will choose few selected families. Huh. I already have railway. Uh, where's the place where I can... Yikes. You selected families. Huh. What happened to Google Fonts? Why is it so weird all of a sudden? course uh whatever i'm just going to click this download all button open this railway.zip yikes static and then i am going to extract to find where my uh let's see where is it Yes, here it is. Extract it to there. Close it. Now I have the font. This font here. So I can set everything to font family to railway. And then what I can do is that I can uh, set its font weight, i.e. the font thickness, font boldness, whichever one you like to call it. And then I can see. At import directive. No, let's see. Open anyways. Six. Yikes. Uh. URL. Static slash railway. Lack dot ctf. Yikes. 
But why isn't my font any more, well, bolder? Uh, so I totally didn't spend 10 hours trying to fix this problem. But I just clicked it. Google search. Ah, finally, I've managed to fix the problem. So, the font is cooler. But I think I have to increase the thickness of the font. Railway black, but CTF may be better in this case instead. Gives it a really bold look, don't you think? Anyways, that is the end of today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel, Obacode. Bye!